Next to our library preparation kits, provide a fast and simple workflow, utilizing a modified transposon for cleaving and tagging DNA. The resulting libraries are compatible with all Illumina sequencing systems. In this video, we are going to discuss some of the key steps in the Nextera process and provide some tips and tricks on how to achieve optimal results. Successful Nextera library preparation relies on the quality and quantity of sample. The first step in the library preparation is the tagmentation reaction. In this step, the transposon simultaneously cleaves the DNA and tags it. Tagging adds on a partial adapter sequence. The tagmentation process is an endpoint reaction. The transposon cleaves once and it is done. The resulting fragment sizes are highly dependent on the mass of the input material, so adding too much input DNA can lead to under-tagmentation. Likewise, too little DNA can lead to over-tagmentation. Illumina recommends using a fluorometric method like qubit or picogreen for quantification while avoiding use of UV absorbance methods. See the video series titled, How Do I Achieve Consistent Quantitation? Here is a typical bioanalyzer trace from the Nextera library prep. Notice the wide distribution. An ideal library ranges from about 200 base pair to 1 KB. We anticipate most of the library to be within this size range. So let's talk more about undertagmentation. Undertagmentation is a process whereby DNA is undercleaved. Here's a simple illustration to demonstrate this idea. Imagine a factory that has a production line cutting string to a desired length. The string factory has three cutters. Each string must be cut to approximately 10 centimeters. For a 40 centimeter input string, the resulting pieces are cut into 8 to 12 centimeter pieces, perfect for achieving our optimal string size. What if instead we started with a 100 centimeter input string? When cut by our same three cutters, the resulting pieces are 20 to 40 centimeters and too long. So why is this optimal size so important? Libraries larger than about 1 kb cluster inefficiently on the flow cell, leading to lower than expected cluster densities. Lower cluster density results in lower output and can increase your overall sequencing costs. In addition to excess DNA input, enzymatic inhibitors can also lead to undertagmentation. Some of the more common inhibitors include chelators such as EDTA, proteins, detergents, or phenols. For a full list of inhibitors, check out our Nextera XT troubleshooting technical note. This document can be found on the Nextera XT support page. If you suspect contaminants in your DNA sample, we recommend using UV absorbance as a purity indicator. An absorbance reading of greater than 1.8 at the 260 to 80 angstrom ratio indicates high quality DNA. A reading of greater than 2.0 at 280 and 230 angstroms is a good indicator of a sample that is free of proteins and organics respectively. If needed, additional purification steps or filtration can help remove contaminants. Now that we have discussed under-tagmentation, let's revisit our string factory and discuss over-tagmentation. Over-tagmentation is a process whereby input DNA is overcleaved. In this example, we begin with an input string that is only 25 centimeters long. After our three cutters get a hold of it, we are left with four pieces that can be anywhere from 5 to 10 centimeters long. Some of these pieces are well short of our desired 10 centimeter product. So what does that mean for the library prep? To remove primer and adapter dimers, the cleanup steps are designed to remove fragments below 200 base pairs. DNA that is too short will be removed, resulting in low or no yield. There are three specific scenarios that primarily lead to over tagmentation. The first is loading less DNA than is required. As demonstrated in our string factory, having less DNA equals over clustering or over tagmentation in these cases. Therefore, accurate quantification by a fluorometric method is necessary to ensure libraries of the appropriate size range. The second condition that can lead to over tagmentation is using DNA that is degraded, such as that which is found with our FFPE samples. The transposons need at least 300 base pair of genomic space to bind properly to the DNA. 
The third scenario is with smaller sized amplicons. While Nextera was intended for genomic DNA, it is also has been successfully used for amplicons that are of the appropriate size. The amplicon should be at least 300 base pair, and we re recommend designing primers at least 50 base pairs upstream and downstream of the interrogation site. Lower coverage can occur at the distal ends of the amplicon, so designing primers up and downstream can ensure adequate coverage. There are several optional quality control points that can help assess library quality before proceeding on to sequencing. After tagmentation, while the yield or amplitude of the trace might be low, you can run one microliter of the library on a high sensitivity bioanalyzer DNA chip. The expected library should be, be, be between 200 base pair to 1.5 KB, with most of the library less than 1 KB. Alternatively, the sample can be run on a bioanalyzer after PCR amplification before bead cleanup especially if you see little to no peaks after tagmentation. Checking libraries at this point confirms libraries are greater than 200 base pairs and will be retained in the subsequent bead cleanup steps. After PCR cleanup, fragments less than 200 base pair are discarded along with primer and adapter dimers. While results can vary, these traces represent examples of a successful final library. The final step in the library preparation is quantification of the library. Depending on the preparation, there are two methods for this process, manual quantification or bead-based normalization. Each has its own considerations and advantages. Let's start with manual quantification. After the PCR cleanup step, the library's double-stranded DNA and best quantified using a fluorometric method such as qubit or picograin. After quantification, libraries are ready to be pooled denatured and diluted for sequencing. Note the broad distribution of Nextera libraries. Bioanalyzer traces, while great for assessing final library size, are not a suitable method for quantification, nor is qPCR. There is simply no single qPCR control to reflect the broad library distribution. Manual quantification is most appropriate when quantifying a limited number of libraries, but it can be cumbersome when processing large numbers of samples for pooling. Some of our Nextera library preps, such as Nextera XT, enable users to use a bead-based normalization process. In this process, libraries are added to normalization beads. These beads contain a specific number of binding sites. The final eluded library is normalized and can be pooled with other normalized libraries at a one-to-one -one ratio by volume. The library is now single-stranded and ready to load onto the Illumina sequencing system. This process is optimized primarily for use with our MySeq systems. Note that single-stranded libraries are not visible on a bioanalyzer. If quantification is desired, a single-stranded protocol on a qubit can be used. To prevent degradation of the single-stranded libraries, only store up to one week at minus 20 degrees Celsius. For longer-term storage, Illumina recommends stopping before normalization, immediately after PCR cleanup, when the libraries are still double-stranded, and store them frozen. It is best to proceed with bead-based normalization only when the libraries are ready to be sequenced. Finally, Illumina has a wealth of resources for Nextera-based library preparations. For additional support, we leave you with the following links to support pages and a detailed troubleshooting technical note. Remember that Illumina technical support or your local field application scientists are available for questions. And thank you for being part of the Illumina community.